Hello newcomers and old timers, I am Cole Scratches and thank you for joining me to take another look at what I found. Today's video will be a little bit different as it's less a review than you might expect. In 1995 Fox Television broadcast a documentary called Alien Autopsy Fact or Fiction where several experts weighed in on a recently unearthed bit of video that supposedly showed a actual alien being being well, you guessed it, autopsied. About 10 years later, the man behind the footage, he came out with a half-assed confession where he admitted that yes, he had faked the footage. But to this day, a lot of people still believe the footage was real. Personally, I liked her on the side of him probably cooking up a hoax and then profiting from it. But the event nevertheless illustrated a point which is which is integral to not just uh, not just found footage but cinema in general people want to believe the implication of the footage sent shockwaves across the world at large as the documentary presented the opinions and judgments of several experts both debunking and confirming the film and leaving it very open whether or not the footage was real it opens for debate among the audience, but the show very much presents it favorably, leaving most people feeling like they really did just witness proof of alien life on Earth. The original video which the program discusses shows snippets of the supposed autopsy of one of the alien bodies recovered from the 1947 Roswell incident, confirming that not only was there a UFO crash, but the United States did cover it up. This was the holy grail of UFO truth. What the community has wanted to know for half a century finally being confirmed to the whole planet. And by the standards of UFO hoaxes, it took a really long time before it was out and out debunked. And 11 years for the final nail in the coffin to be delivered when Ray Santellini finally admitted to hiring an artist to create the body and assembling a production to film the autopsy. Interestingly, to this day he claims it wasn't an all-out hoax, but there existed real footage of a real alien autopsy being performed on a real alien. And he was trying to purchase the footage from the cameraman who shot it, but unfortunately the footage was destroyed. So he spent several thousands of pounds recreating it, you know, just to be nice. He didn't make any money from it, no no no. Maybe a little. But um, anyway. These events were later on adapted into the eponymous Britcom Alien Autopsy, which starred one of my favorite comedians, Jimmy Carr, in a very minor role. I should probably track that movie down and make a review of it, but today we're watching the actual autopsy footage. First and foremost, I'll say I 100% understand the people who looked at this footage and were convinced about the existence of aliens. Found footage movies were a thing in 1995, Man Bites Dog was released just two years before this film. But this footage was broadcast by Fox Television and presented as possibly genuine. Today, when American trust in traditional journalism is equal to their trust in socialism, one can make what jokes one want about that, but... When truth is stranger than fiction, personally, I find it a bit difficult to joke about it. Um, for example, when the film director of the documentary, John Jobson, when he first met Ray Santilli, he was convinced from the get-go that all of it was a hoax. But when he brought up his concerns to the show's producers, he was told point-blank if the footage was discredited before the program aired, the ratings would tank. And William Deere, the, the private investigator that was brought on to investigate the footage, when yeah, he was hamstrung by the corporation. He was only allowed to investigate the alleged cameraman that Santilli supposedly bought the footage from. Basically, if the footage turned out to be fake, no one was allowed to realize that until after the show had aired. I, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I, I'm honestly, I am... I'm more pissed off than amused by that. S somebody else make a joke! Fox Television realized they had been handed a goldmine because people would want to see this. 
it had gore, nudity, disturbing images, and it was all wrapped up in the proof of extraterrestrial life and government conspiracy. It was ratings gold, and with plausible deniability, they could in theory broadcast it without backlash if it was discredited. In America, public service tend to be a for-profit venture, which it is in Sweden as well. But unlike Sweden, American public service tend to be owned by massive corporations that are more interested in turning a profit than accurate reporting. For that reason, facts aren't always double-checked, and the newscasters are allowed to skew their reports to further their agenda. Higher ratings means more revenue, and so Fox wanted to make sure nothing jeopardized what they assumed would be massive ratings. And boy were they. November 1995, for the third time this one 40 minute show was aired. It raked in a whopping 11.7 million viewers which is about a tenth of Super Bowl that year because Americans would actually rather watch a football game than convincing proof of alien life. Maybe Santilla should have given it tits. Bringing me neatly to the creature design. If you were among the lucky few who watched the documentary or bought a copy of the unedited footage when it was released, you would be forgiven for thinking the footage was real. Because between the camera quality, creature design, and restrained special effects, it looks incredibly real. But there are subtle clues that point to the forgery, such as the at times shoddy camera work or questionable anatomy of the creature. When I say shoddy camera work, I mean there are times when the camera operator seems to deliberately keep the camera unfocused, and I feel scientists would demand much better documentation of something like this. Not to mention shots like this when they are about to remove the creature's brain, and instead of switching sides to see them open up the skull, the cameraman stays behind the surgeon making the cut. As for the anatomy, I've never taken a human being apart. It's on my to-do list, but I haven't done it yet. And I do believe organs tend to be neatly packed in with the stomach cavity, rather than thrown in like rumpled cloves in a duffel bag at a shotgun wedding. And then there is this very confusing anatomical discrepancy where they cut into the eyes and remove the outer layer, revealing those iconic pitch black eyes are in fact covered by a brill, like a snake. The obvious response to this is of course that it's an alien, and assuming their anatomy looks and functions the same as ours is a little conceited, but on the other hand, it's humanoid, so we're in a bit of a grey area. <laughs> I'm mentioning these things because I want to illustrate just how nitpicky you need to be to find anything to break the illusion. In traditional creature features that use puppets and rubber suits and other practical effects, the biggest giveaway the creatures are faked is the way they move, and no amount of realism to the puppets can change that. In this footage the creature is dead, making the illusion much easier to pull off, but it's still needed to look convincing and by god, it does. Beyond the air accurate camera and equipment, the puppet itself is masterfully crafted. It truly looks like it could have been alive at some point. And the insides actually were. The organs used in the footage aren't fake, they're real animal offals, purchased from SD Crosby Wholesale's butchers at the Smithfield Meat Market in London. <laughs> That's an interesting claim to fame. Our products were used in the most successful hoax of the 90s. I couldn't actually find anything about it, but I really hope their sales numbers went up. The brain specifically is from a sheep, but to give it a more alien look it was covered in raspberry jam. Which all in all makes it sound like a semi-obscure dish from somewhere. Bon appetit! As for the puppet's exterior, there are several reasons for why it looks so real. First of all, it's got all the characteristics of the classic descriptions of Seda Radiculians, or as they're more commonly known, the Grey. It's got the underdeveloped body, the oversized head, the pitch black eyes, it's a very recognizable appearance, which makes it more believable than if it had been something never before seen. The second thing is, despite its exaggerated physique, the body still looks very natural. It looks like a creature that could have been alive at some point, and there is very good reason for that. The alien was designed by renowned sculptor John Humphreys, who specializes in distorted anatomy in a style that he calls 
hyperrealism. His sculptures usually depict human heads with grossly distorted aspect ratios which are very uncomfortable to look at. This doesn't necessarily have anything to do with alien anatomy, but this sense of distortion, this experience that he had distorting anatomy while retaining a sense of accuracy, served him well when he designed the alien. Then there is the procedure itself. From what little I know about autopsies, the procedure is very accurately portrayed in this film. It begins with the surgeons investigating the exterior of the body, pointing to different parts of the anatomy, while they seem to discuss the peculiarities. What they actually say is up for debate, as the video is without sound, but real forensic pathologists do discuss the exterior of their patients before beginning the procedure. Perhaps they're theorizing about the function and form of the creature, or what may have caused the slightly odd damage to its knee. At this point, the procedure takes a slightly odd turn, as they don't perform a traditional Y incision. Instead of starting at the top of the shoulders, they start at the sides of the neck before cutting down to the sternum and opening up the rest of the torso. A visual examination of the organs takes place before the movie cuts out, and when it returns, they have removed the front of the ribcage and have started removing organs from inside the creature. I've heard some people think the autopsy is going unrealistically fast, that they're stripping the creature like a car in a bad neighborhood, but it's important to remember if this had been real, this autopsy would have occurred so much as a day after the UFO crashed. These creatures would have already started putrefying by now. They would have needed to work fast if they wanted any useful documentation. They proceed to remove the dark brill I mentioned earlier before opening up the scalp. A saw is used to decap the skull and expose the brain. It seems to be held in place by some sort of thin film, but using a pair of scissors to cut it open, they slowly remove the brain itself. After this, the camera cuts away from the autopsy to instead survey the supposed pieces of wreckage from the UFO. And here we find the most embarrassing goof the filmmakers made. So are the aliens Greek or are the Greeks aliens? That spells out liberty in Euclidean, except it's upside down. So no, the footage isn't perfect, but it is impressive how long its validity lasted. Granted, it was released in a time before social media, so hoaxes weren't uprooted as fast as they are these days, and the only people available to question about the footage were experts that had time and fees and needed to be on TV to get their, to get their thoughts on the matter out. So it, there are reasons for why it lasted so long. And even then, any attempt to discredit the footage could be waved away by saying it's a government conspiracy, okay? They're trying desperately to convince you the footage isn't real, so they can keep the truth to themselves. And even today, even after Centilli's confession, a significant portion of the UFO community are convinced the footage is real. Why? Well, aside from the fantastically well-executed production, barring the thing with the Greek lettering, people simply want to believe. And I swear I am not just riffing on X-Files by saying that. We live in an interesting age so far as believability is concerned. The age of post-truth. People can pick and choose what to believe in, and find facts that support it no matter what it is. And with video technology openly advancing to the point where it's becoming more and more difficult to discern fiction from reality, it's just as interesting as it is terrifying. For this reason, I believe found footage is more relevant today than it has ever been, as it lets one draw attention to this discrepancy between fact and fiction by framing it as a work of art. It lets one explore the concept of perceived reality in an entertaining way. Most found footage films aren't that highbrow, but this inadvertent depth allows for fantasy and wonder to reach into our frame of reference and become real for a little while, more so than any traditional movies. I am born with the heart of a romantic and the mind of a cynic. I want to believe in magic, okay? I want to believe in meaning and beauty and mystery and 
I want to believe that there is more to this stalled existence than just waiting to become crockery. And I think... I think Alien Autopsy embodies that sentiment, that wish for the fantastic to be real, for the doldrums of reality to just become a little bit colorful and maybe feel like a miracle has finally happened! I don't have issues. YOU HAVE ISSUES! I don't approve of Watson till he did, but I am impressed by what he accomplished. With a mere 36,000 pounds, he created footage convincing enough to put billion dollar Hollywood productions to shame. It was manipulative and greedy, and had half the planet convinced about the existence of alien life. For a few years. People did start questioning the validity not long after the footage was released to the public, but I think nevertheless a point had been made. A very sombering point, but an important one. For a while, this movie was fact. It was proof of a highly disputed claim, before it was disproven by other facts that can be read about online today. It's interesting to me how philosophies theorized hundreds of years ago by Descartes, Kant, and even Plato are gradually becoming practical reality. What great fraud will be perpetrated or revealed next, I don't know, but I am equally excited and terrified to find out. I hope you enjoyed my brief analysis of Alien Autopsy, and I'm really sorry it took so long to get out. I. So many things happened, I just couldn't get the script done on time, and then I couldn't film on time, and I'm sorry it's a week late. And um, with all this talk about with all this talk about aliens, I pretty much have to review a movie on the subject. So next week, no, not, no, next, not next week, the week after that, uh, a fortnight from now, look forward to The Phoenix Incident. Thank you all for watching, I have been Core Scratches. And in addition to DA and YouTube, you can now follow me on Twitter as well. So scamper over there uh, to keep up with what I'm doing. And I hope you will see me again next time to take another look at what I found.